Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well today I'm going to talk a little bit about NVIS antennas. The reason I am is because I'm playing around with the Chameleon modular portable antenna system in an NVIS configuration. Uh, what is an NVIS antenna? Uh, I've had a couple of comments in previous videos where uh, one or two guys say I'm wasting time by talking about what something is before I actually demo it. Well, too bad. Uh, everybody else likes it. And I like to give a little information for the new hams, uh, or the uh, people that have not yet encountered whatever it is I'm talking about, to fill them in, fill in the blanks for them before I really show you what it is. So we're going to continue doing that. NVIS stands for Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And what an NVIS antenna is, is it's an antenna that has a much higher takeoff angle. Um, takeoff angle is the maximum radiation of an antenna. With a vertical antenna, that's pretty much almost horizontal. They really push the signal out. And usually that's what you want if you're going after DX or long distance communications. You want a low takeoff angle so that signal goes as far as possible before it hits the ionosphere and skips back. And that increases your skip distance and you get out further. You get longer distance communications. Well, there may be times when you want closer in reliable communications. And in those cases, an NVIS antenna is the way to go. Now, one user of the NVIS type of antennas is the military. And the reason that they like to use those antennas for, say, deployed troops in a mountainous terrain is the mountains. You might have a station, a base station, and you might have a deployed, uh, some deployed troops that are on the other side of the mountain and down in the valley. Well, a signal from your transmitter is not going to get through that mountain. But if your signal is being thrown mostly straight up, it's going to bounce off the ionosphere and come back down to where that station is on the other side of the mountain. So NVIS uh, antennas can provide more reliable, shorter distance communication on HF frequencies. Uh, NVIS, the effect of NVIS is more pronounced from 8 megahertz and down in frequency. The higher you get above, uh, above there, the less pronounced the effect is, the less reliable it is. So NVIS is usually used for the lower bands, like 40 meters, 80 meters, maybe even 160 meters. So what is an NVIS antenna? How, does it, how do you make an antenna that's going to push more signal up? Usually, they are a dipole or a flat type of wire antenna that is closer to the ground. And then the ground kind of acts a little bit like a reflector. There's some ground loss, obviously, some of the signals being absorbed. But it, uh, it tends to make the antenna radiate upwards. If we look at a couple of plots here, now we're going to be looking end on at the antenna, right? If this is the wire, we're going to be looking at the end of the antenna. And as we'll see on these plots, on the left, we have a dipole. And you can see the shape of that radiated signal. Uh, you'll see that it's pushing more of the signal outwards, maybe out and up, but not that much vertically. But on the right, we have an NVIS antenna plot. And you can see that that lobe is more rounded. More of the signal is going up and less of it's going out. Uh, and then we get that NVIS effect, where the signal can go straight up and reflect straight down. So, I'm playing around with the Chameleon MPAS, Modular Portable Antenna System, and I have it configured as an NVIS antenna. Back on the back of the RV, I have the hybrid, the 5 to 1 matching transformer, mounted on my ladder at about 6 feet off the ground. Uh, the wire runs from the hybrid straight out across the field here, and I have a center support and then an end support that keeps it about six feet off the ground all the way out. And it's about a 65 foot wire. Kind of short for the lower bands, but that's the wire they provide. Uh, I uh, made a QSO on it the other night on 80 meters and I tuned around a little bit. Let's go look at that segment. Yeah, I have a swamp cooler on right now. Yeah, I got one over here in that camera. It's uh, got up to about 80 degrees, but. 
Yeah, I guess that was okay. Contact. Sure, contact in there, but really light. Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey. Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey Portable 7. Over. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, good evening, guys. Name here is Kevin, Kilo Echo Victor, India, November. And uh, just uh, trying out this uh, antenna configuration, tuning around a bit, and I uh, heard you guys, and I uh, thought I'd just hop in and say hello. I'm uh, presently uh, parked just outside of Kingman, Kingman, Arizona. Over. Okay, your signal came up a little bit. Uh, PK 6 fr name here is Frank, over here in the Mojave Desert by Edwards Air Force Base. Oh yeah, okay. Not too far away. Yeah, this is an Envis antenna uh, by Chameleon. Um, I've presently got it uh, about six feet off the ground, and uh, it runs uh, about 60, 65 feet, I think. And it has a Chameleon, uh, they call it a hybrid, it's a, basically a 5 to 1 uh, on on at the feed point. And I'm running about 30 watts, 30 watts. So just tuning around a little while on 80, I'm getting all kinds of signals. Uh, we got a lot of static noise. There's some storms. It's spring, uh, but uh, it receives pretty well. Holy cow! Take the microphone out of your mouth. <laughs> Let's see about 160. I'll be amazed if the ICOMS tuner can tune on 160 with this. Yeah, I didn't think so. What about the LDG tuner? Well, can't get the SWR below 3 to 1 on 160. Uh, but I really didn't expect it to work. It's too short of a wire. If it was twice the length, if it was 126 feet or so, it would probably tune just fine through the Chameleon Hybrid. That wire is just too short. Yeah, that's the AM broadcast band. I can't leave it on music for very long. You can see there's a station on every single channel slot. Multiple stations. You can hear it's like a mishmash of voices. Hear that? We've got such a good antenna for receiving that we're picking up multiple AM stations at the same time, which makes it impossible to listen to any one of them on each channel slot. There's so many stations out there. Now there we've got one that's stronger than the rest. Well, that's definitely an Asiatic language of some type. Like, it's not Chinese, it's not Japanese, it might be Korean. I don't know what that language is. Isn't that interesting? Fascinating. Well, anyway, I do like to shortwave listen a lot when I'm out here in the desert, and I like to go across the AM broadcast band now and then, but that's the first time I've heard a foreign language that was not Spanish. You know, I'm not too far from the Mexican border here, just a hundred and... 30, 140 miles or something like that. So I get a lot of Mexican stations, you know, speaking Spanish. But that's the first time I've heard that language on here, and I'm not even sure what that language is. Anyway, the Envis antenna um, is working pretty well. Uh, additionally, I did some whisper broadcasting, or beaconing, uh, just to get a, an idea of how far out I was going to get. Um, some during the day and some during the night. And this is 20 meters during the day. 
you know, I was a little surprised that it got out as far as it did, and there weren't any closer in ones. But uh, as you know, or as I mentioned, I think, with the NVIS um, antennas, that vertical incidence effect is more effective, according to all the documentation I found, on 8 megahertz and lower in frequencies. And the higher you go in frequency, the less of a vertical um, reflected effect you get. So 20 meters. The antenna, being only six feet off the ground, actually got out pretty well. This is a 300 milliwatt whisper beaconing, and you can see I got all the way across there to New York. What really surprised me was in the early evening. Um, 20 meters in the early evening, again, 300 milliwatts. I was getting out across the eastern part of the United States um, out here. But uh, wow, Australia, <laughs> VK4CT, and Hawaii. Uh, AI6VN slash KH6, um, they both picked up that 300 milliwatt um, whisper broadcast. Uh, this is 40 meters during the day, and uh, it was, I think, about mid afternoon. And uh, well, we got a lot of hits. You can see there's, there's a lot of hits out here to California, probably just a lot of stations out there. Um, but we did get out uh, some pretty decent distance out here to uh, Colorado, uh, N6GN slash K, and all the way up there to Canada. But uh, we were probably starting to see a little bit of the NVIS effect because we're getting a lot of close-in stations. It could be ground wave too, I'm not sure. But uh, 80 meters, uh, well no, actually this is 40 meters at night. Um, and again, I was surprised to get all the way out to Hawaii with 300 milliwatts, but hey, what do you know, it's propagation. Um, the uh, United States, man, we got the entire country. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, I think, about 9 in the evening. Uh, and then also 80 meters at night. And uh, not a lot of hits, but uh, a little closer in. Uh, although we did get up here to, you know, way above California, which was surprising. So uh, not what I expected to see. But then again, whisper, you know, it doesn't take much signal to be heard. So probably not a good indication. The antenna was oriented east to west, um, and I was getting a lot of north and south, uh, which I would expect, but I was surprised to get all the way east off the end of the antenna. So it's an interesting antenna. Uh, yeah. So where would an Envis antenna be useful outside of the military? Well, I can think of one example off the top of my head. Back when I was at Rockport, I had lunch with one of my viewers, and his day job was, uh, he, was in, he was a police officer, and he was in charge of the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center uh, in the city. And uh, he, we were talking, and we were talking about the hurricane that came through there, but little more than a year before. And uh, he was telling me about the evacuation. And uh, one of the things that they had tried to do is they tried to set up HF communications between the city and the far end of the evacuation route, which I think he had said was around 60, 65 miles away. Um, they had trouble. They had trouble finding a band where they could get reliable HF communications, ground wave, from their location out to the end. And I, I mentioned to him that this might have been in a, an area where an NVIS antenna set up at both ends would have been useful. Uh, using that sky wave that bounce up and bounce back, they might have had better luck providing reliable HF communications between the two locations. So that would be one example where an NVIS setup might be useful. There might be others. Anyway, it's a very interesting antenna approach, and I hope that you found this uh, information interesting, perhaps useful. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.